We are in a series called Faith Factors, or additives to, or assets to, or aids, or helps to cause you to understand what faith is, how it works, uh, and to increase your understanding of faith, and, and to, cre- to increase in the, in the uh, applicable uh, uh, operation of faith in your life. And so we looked at the first one last week in Exodus chapter 4, verse 5, with Moses. I want to continue with that. Uh, understanding and that framework. Let's go to Exodus 19 and 9. Go to Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. Hallelujah. Say amen if you have it. The Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you the lord gave him a word the lord spoke i am going to come or i'm going to appear in a dense the word dense there means thick i'm going to appear in a thick cloud and the word cloud there is not like a cloud in the sky but it's a smoky mist I'm going to appear to you in a dense cloud. What? So that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. Everybody say, put trust. The phrase, uh, the two words put trust means to stand firm in the faith. To stand firm in faith. One of the main objectives for the Spirit of God moving in your life is that you stand firm in faith. Somebody say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise tonight. Move by your spirit according to your glory and your will in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. God speaks to Moses and he says, I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. Now, the issue is not so much that Moses would be the object of their faith, but that they would understand that God moves in certain ways and certain mannerisms and certain avenues in such a way where he uses people. And so that they can trust the Spirit of God in and upon that person's life. But ultimately, it is God who gets the glory and not man. Don't ever misunderstand that. They were never to make Moses the object of their affection or the object of their their trust in that sense. They were trusting God in him. Are you following me? All right. God says, I'll do it this way. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to appear. I'm going to show up. I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud. God's presence makes his person... A reality for believers. God's presence makes his person a reality for believers. So he says, when the people see me show up and appear to you, they're going to know that I am who I said that I am. They're going to know I'm real. They're going to know that when they see you respond to me and me give you wisdom, direction, understanding, me tell you and instruct you, they're going to know that is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But that, that, is, that is God Almighty. That is Yahweh. That is the Lord Almighty. He's real. The presence of God designates then the place of his appearing he said I'm going to come to you and I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud so the presence of God designates the place that he appears or the place of that manifestation as holy ground when he shows up in capacities in mannerisms, in ways, in avenues, in demonstrations, in manifestations, in appearances, that place in which he appears then becomes holy ground or becomes consecrated or becomes sacrosanct in, in, in our understanding of his, his manifestation. We know that it was special. We know the appearing was special. We know that the place was special. Not that it continues to be special necessarily, but at that moment it was made to be holy ground when God appeared to Moses in the burning bush and once that stopped 
that was no longer holy ground. You understand? It was only holy while God showed up. And so they're going to, he says, they're going to know when I show up, I'm going to create an atmosphere. I'm going to create a supernatural atmosphere in the middle of a natural circumstance or situation that's going to cause them to understand that for that moment, for that season, for that time, that place is holy because I'm there. One of the purposes of a theophany or a manifestation, what is a theophany? A theophany is a visible, tangible, sometimes intangible, but it is an appearance of God, theophany, uh, to, to, to shine, finals, to, to, to shine or to illuminate or, or to be seen, to be made manifest. Theos is God, an appearance of God that is brilliant, that is beyond our understanding, beyond our comprehension. When God shows up in the Old Testament, especially in these different ways, these mannerisms, manifestations, different, different expressions of God, they are called theophanies. Everybody say theophany. All right. One of the purposes of a theophany is for the recipient, the one who's receiving the theophany or observing the theophany, is for the recipient to be able to trust God in a greater way than he did prior to that experience. We're, we're blessed tonight because we were able to see God move Sunday and our apprehension and our comprehension of how he moved in our midst Sunday gave us a greater ability and a greater appreciation for who he is tonight. I, I, I've got a greater feel about God, if I can put it that way, than I did Sunday before church started. Are you feeling me? I can trust him in a greater way. Because of what he did here. Because of how he showed up. So one of the purposes of any theophany is so that God's people will trust him in a greater way than they did prior to the theophanic experience. Now, let me say this quickly, because this is vitally important as we, as we understand how God does what he does, especially in relation to the increase of our understanding of faith. Theophanies and traditions are mutually exclusive. Theophanies and traditions are mutually exclusive. They are not compatible. Because traditions want to keep you relegated to a certain form or understanding or concept or construct of who God is and how He moves. Well, He didn't do it that way before. And so God says, fine, you want to keep me like that? Keep your tradition, but you won't have a theophany. They are mutually exclusive. They are not compatible. And the problem with many aspects and segments of the church world today is that they want tradition over theophanies. Traditions are conventional, and they convey the absolute necessity of keeping within the appointed safe limits of religious function. Tradition says you do it this way. It doesn't go beyond that. Don't expect anything. Don't look for anything. This is all you get. This is all you need. And this is how it works. Don't look for anything else. Don't desire any. Don't, don't even anticipate anything else. That's not God. It, I, 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 uh, we, we posted um, the video of what happened here Sunday. Some of it. And... and most people were just 
just overwhelmed by it and praise God hallelujah what an amazing service I wish I could be in a service like that uh, one 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 person said I miss that I grew up with that I can't find it where I live and so people were hungry but then at the same time there was a local pastor who posted a quick video saying that these kinds of things are irrelevant and they're useless and we just need to be taught let me let me just say this first of all the devil is alive you see wherever you find the moving of the Spirit of God you will always find critics You'll always find naysayers. You'll always find people who want to keep you locked in tradition. That's why theophanies and and, and tradition are mutually exclusive. Traditions, they, 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 they literally dictate that this is the appointed safe limit of religious function. This is what we do. This is how we do it. And beyond that, it's not legitimate. But the representative, powerful manifestation of divine presence enables the worshiper to break out of tradition and experience the unforgettable awesomeness of God. That's exactly what happens here, and that's exactly what happens Sunday. We experience the unforgettable awesomeness of I will never forget what happened here Sunday. The awesomeness of God. What does that mean? To be awesome means to be worthy of reverence. He was revered here Sunday. Only... A manifestation of God can do that. Tradition cannot do that. Religion cannot do that. And so God intends then to show himself for the purpose of the enhancement of and the emboldening of and the appreciation of faith. God appears, listen, he said, I, he said I'm going to appear to you. I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud. God appears in a context calculated to produce unforgettable awe. He appears in a context that is calculated to produce unforgettable awe. God says, I'm going to show up And one of the purposes for my showing up is that when I show up, my people will be so overwhelmed by my presence that they will never forget it and they will not come into a place of not appreciating it and they will not neglect it, overlook it, or or, or, or shelve it to, to some other relegation of something that is not necessary or important like most of the church has done today. That's why moves of God in most places that claim to be Holy Ghost filled houses are relics of the past. You can't find a move of God in most churches today to save your life. God appears in a context calculated. To produce unforgettable awe. Listen, not only does he appear with a calculated purpose and intention of producing unforgettable awe in the recipient and the observer and the one who is in his manifest presence, but he also does it to inscribe that experience in the center of your being. 
It is indelible. It is, it, you cannot erase that. No one can ever say who was here Sunday, oh, God didn't show up. You can't say. It's on the inside of you. You know that you know that you know that you know that you know. It is in your know. I know in my knower God was here. God manifests his power. He manifests his presence. He, went, he showed up for his glory's sake. And we gave him glory. Well, guess what? Guess what? That's why he showed up. That's why he showed up. That's why he showed up. Oh, but we got blessed. Yeah, that's nice, but that's not why he showed up. He showed up to get glory for himself. When God comes, he said, he said I, I'm going to come to you. When God comes, when God appears to us. It makes him then the object of faith and builds up our faith in him. Let me just make it real simple in relation to what he said to Moses. See, you, you see God move in, in, in the house. You see God move. You can see God signs and wonders. Etc. Yeah, he's using people. He uses me. He uses various other people. And, but your faith isn't put in me at that point. You're not going, oh, my faith is in Pat. No, you're saying my faith is in God who has pastor in his hand. My faith is in God whose anointing is on the pastor right now. My faith is in the God who creates miracles and does awesome, amazing things. He's using a man because that's how he moves. And that's why he said, I'll take the foolish to confound the wise. I'll be foolish for him any day. So he can get the glory. He does it so that he then becomes the object of faith and builds up our faith in him. No one left here saying, wow, pastor was awesome. You better not. Because I'm not and it has nothing to do with me. Everybody is saying, God is awesome. God gets the glory. God gets the honor. God gets the praise. And my faith has increased in him. My ability to believe him has increased. I saw him do things that were beyond human comprehension and human ability. Listen. Listen. When the glory of God is revealed, heaven and earth meet. Deity and humanity come together. And so the appearance of God then, because that is how that formula is orchestrated, The appearance of God is always accompanied and marked by significant, sure evidences of His presence that add to your faith. Your own quota of faith and the operation, the apprehension, the understanding of it increased Sunday morning. No one who was in this house and experienced the presence of God left here the same. And so when God shows up, He shows up for that purpose and he shows up then with sure evidences of his presence for the purpose of adding to your faith. Every appearance of God marks a significant milestone in your life of faith. You will go back to this experience over and over again. 
The longer that you live in God, the longer that you move in the operation of the Spirit, the longer that you are in the atmosphere in which God is free to move by His Spirit for His glory, you will continue to develop a log book of what God does and how He does it. Hallelujah. And each one is significant. Each one is a landmark. Each one is a milestone. Each one is a, is a landmark experience in God. Amen. What does that do? That gives you a backlog of how God moves, why He moves, when He moves, for the purpose of what He does, and the, move, the manner in which He does it, that gives you a great handle then on the faithfulness of God that creates a greater sense of faith in God for you. Each experience enables you to enter into a deeper level of faith in your relationship with God. I grew deeper after Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which is why on Monday and, and Tuesday and, and Wednesday, I asked him for certain things and believed him for certain things by faith. Okay. Guess what? They all happened. God's glory appears. This, this, this second faith factor is, is, is the manifest presence of God in our midst. This appearance, this coming into the arena where we live. God's glory appears to let you know He can be believed in. I'm going to show up, show out. Show off to let you know you can believe in me. Listen, whether it's a burning bush or a gentle whisper, God wants you to realize that his promises are yes so that you can declare the amen. Amen. If you believe that, stand to your feet and give Him praise right now. We thank you. We give you glory. We magnify your name tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the special gift of your manifest presence by your Spirit. Continue, we ask, to show up for your glory that we might increase in our faith in you and believe you for the greater things that you have in store. For your glory, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. And amen.